Hello physics class! My presentation is on field theory of quantum mechanics. This topic is very complex, so we really need to get started right away. The first thing we have to understand is the concept of quantum fields. Luckily, IB made us learn about the Higgs boson, and so you are all more or less familiar with the Higgs field. Basically, the idea of the Higgs field and Higgs boson applies to every single other fundamental particle because every single fundamental particle has its own field, electrons, quarks, everything. Now that we have the basic concept for a quantum field, we must ask, what even are these fields? Basically, the fields are like a four-dimensional space, where every point in 3D space has a value attached to it, which can be thought of the fourth-dimensional component of the field. So what does this extra value of the field represent? These numbers represent the probability of a particle being there. Kind of. I have to apologize because I lied earlier. The field isn't like a four-dimensional space because the probabilities are actually complex valued, meaning the field is closer to a five-dimensional space. So how can probability be complex valued? I have absolutely no idea. If you're having trouble visualizing this, that's not a bad thing, as everything I've said so far is extremely counterintuitive, and if you think you understand all of it completely, you probably don't. Anyways, a good way to visualize these fields is to simplify them by decreasing the dimensions. Here we have a sleeping bag, and we are waving it slightly. The slight waviness emulates the random fluctuation in these fields. This is a good way to think about the fields, as the height of the sleeping bag at any point can represent the value of the probability. But what about particles, I imagine you're thinking right now? Particles are often called excitations in their respective field. What this means is that there is a dense place on the field where the probability is very high. Once again, this is hard to visualize, so we turn back to the sleeping bag demonstration. This time, there is a golf ball on the sleeping bag. See how it moves around depending on the waving of the sleeping bag? This is one way you can visualize how the particles and the wave functions of the particles interact. Another interesting thing to note is that the golf ball changes the shape of the sheet, which is a good representation of how a particle interacts with the field and changes it, and can be thought of as the particle interacting with itself. So now that you're definitely an expert on quantum field theory, let's see some applications of it. The first application comes with something I'm sure you're all familiar with, the double slit experiment. When light travels through a double slit, the light waves interfere with each other, and we get the interference pattern that you are currently seeing. If we perform the same experiment, except with electrons instead of light, we get the same interference pattern. This is due to the electron field interacting with itself in the same way that photons do. Something really crazy and really weird about this experiment, however, is that if we attempt to measure which slit the electrons go through, the interference pattern disappears completely into just shadows of the two slits. Now we move on to a slightly more obscure example, neutron stars. Neutron stars are incredibly dense stars that form when absolutely massive stars die. These stars are so massive that the only thing stopping them from collapsing into a black hole is quantum mechanics. Inside every neutron star, their gravity is so great that the wave functions of each individual neutron is overlapping with all of its neighbors. The only thing that's stopping them from combining to form a black hole is the repulsion between each neutron. We know that this repulsion has to be due to quantum mechanics because it's definitely not any of the four fundamental forces. It's not gravity because that's purely attractive and it's not the strong force for the same reason. The weak force is not strong enough to overcome the strong force, so even if there was any sort of repulsion due to the weak force, it would be negligible. And it's not electromagnetism as neutrons are neutrally charged. This repulsion is due to a special principle in quantum mechanics that only occurs when the wave functions of two specific types of particles overlap. This special principle is called the Pauli Exclusion Principle. The Pauli Exclusion Principle basically states that two of the same kind of particle can't occupy the same spot in space. To help us visualize this, we once again turn to the sleeping bag and golf balls, and this time there are two golf balls. 
Notice that when the golf balls get really close to each other, the depressions they make in the sleeping bag also get really close to each other and begin to overlap. This is a good representation of when the wave functions of two particles overlap with each other. The fact that the two golf balls don't occupy the same spot on the blanket is a good representation of how the Pauli exclusion principle works. And that's all I have to say about the wave functions in field theory of quantum mechanics. Thank you for watching. Thank you.